Hello everyone, this is Colin once again. Uh, I'm making this video because I haven't made one in a while, and I've been reading a lot of books lately. Um, I'm consistently trying to do that, uh, trying to balance that with my school readings that I have to do. Um, always reading about theology and philosophy and things like that. Um, and I also still watch YouTube videos when I can, and I've been watching uh, videos that are of a more critical nature. Uh, regarding uh, Islamic theology, and I have to say that it's been an interesting um, uh, couple of months now since I've made a video uh, watching some of these criticisms and having conversations with people that are of a little bit more. And I, I don't, and I don't want to mean, or I don't want to come off as saying like critical as in like a negative view. Just you know, taking a more critical look at certain things like the science of hadith and uh, Quranic compilation of texts and things like that. Um, before I go any further, though, I want to say that I did write a new blog post, uh, so I'll have that in the link, the more info section below, if anybody's interested in reading that. Um, still doing a lot of personal investigation, and I think uh, I just want to say at the, 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 the beginning, before any of you watching this go on to read that blog post, I say this in the blog post, but I know some people just don't always pay attention when they're reading. Um, I have not made a solid theological change um, at least uh, officially. Uh, I am still where I was when I made uh, un uh, whatever video it was. Um, still still consider myself a Muslim, uh, but still investigating a lot of alternative looks on, or um, excuse me, a lot of uh, alternative views on Islamic dogma, theology, and uh, history. So having said that, um, I had a number of ideas for videos but i just don't know when i will be able to make another video beyond this one because the semester is in full swing and i don't have a lot of time to make videos um it's almost midnight where i am so this is this is the only time i was able to make a video um so i'm gonna sort of do a smorgasbord of different ideas or different thoughts i've been having um various subjects so if you're more into videos where it's a one-topic video because you can't handle a shotgun of different ideas, um, uh, a spread, if you will, um, then this video won't be for you. But uh, the first thing I want to mention is I finished a great psychology book uh, before we get into theology, which will be the bulk of this video. My other passion, as many of you know, my major, etc., is uh, psychology. And so I read a book called Quiet, the uh, Power of Introverts by Susan Cain, and I'll link her TED Talk into the more info section below. Excellent video about introversion or introverts. Um, for those of you interested in personality psychology or just personality in general, psychological types, um, the concept coined by Jung, uh, Carl Jung. Uh, this is an excellent book written by an introvert about introverts for introverts and extroverts. Uh, you understand yourself, um, about half to one-third of the human population are introverts, so why not read this book? Very enlightening, and I can't recommend it highly enough. Um, so I just wanted to throw that out there. Um, I, I was thinking about making a whole video about introversion, but um, like I said, I don't have a lot of time. So I just wanted to throw that out there, check that book out if you're interested in it. It's an excellent read. Uh, and it's, it's written for the everyday person, so it's not full of psychological jargon, uh, at least... Uh, empir empirical research style of academic writing. Okay, so getting that out of the way. Um, so a couple things. I've been having some correspondences with some individuals, and as you know, my style is not to just toss out usernames, um, because I think it's sort of confrontational. So if people want to make themselves known, they can. I thought it was fascinating, though, back in early, back early, you know, at the beginning part of this month, we're talking the 7th and the 8th of this month, I received multiple messages from people. One person I was actually corresponding with back and, fo back and forth, you know, for a couple days, and then suddenly I was launched with this sort of, uh, you know, kind of this message of... A, you know, belonging to a crappy man-made religion, and you know, et cetera, et cetera, uh, to let go of, of of Islam and things like that. I had another, and then it literally, this literally was, I think, the same day. Totally different user, uh, basically telling me the same thing. <laughs> You know, uh, Islam's absurdities, uh, you know, letting go of it, yada, yada, yada. Uh, and then the next day, having a random uh, message uh, about um, confirmation bias and psychological traits, which I did read the article when it was first sent to me. I don't think I really remember 
uh, the full details. Um, so anyway, I thought that was interesting that I received very similar messages from three different users about this idea that they were paying attention or at least had seen um, uh, an evolution in my thinking regarding theology and how quick they were to just say, hey, you should just drop kick this man, this man-made religion out the window. Um, and I would say that it's not as easy as that. Um, and I think these users, because I believe um, maybe two of them, if not one of them, is an ex-Muslim them, you know, uh, themselves. Uh, the other, I think all three of them are, are skeptics of some kind. What I mean by that is I think they're atheist or agnostic or what have you. Um, and surely they know how it's not, it's just not as simple as one, two, three, to drop kick something like that. Um, and my study of psychology, and the particular psychology that I particularly uh, ascribe to, uh, Jungian analytical psychology, uh, religion is a fundamental part of the human experience. Not necessarily organized religion, and all of its dogma. Uh, Jung did, uh, had a lot of interesting things to say about the more literalistic, conservative, dogmatic, fundamental version of organized religion. Um, he was very much a fan of the individual finding out for themselves what makes sense to them as opposed to being forced into or pigeonholed into a, um, a set of beliefs without questioning or investigating themselves. Um, but be that as it may, I, I don't see that as being a simple thing of just letting go. Um, my current views for the past couple years now, or year and a half, what have you, have been evolving. So where I started off being a, what I considered to myself to being an Orthodox Sunni Muslim, um, you know, who very much believed in, in, in a more literalistic view of, of text, uh, I've come a long way since that point. I even have said, I don't, I would go so far as to say that I am a, I am a Muslim, but not a, not of the um, Orthodox Sunni persuasion in a sense that where I was before. Um, and so, yeah, my views do align to certain key individuals that are Muslim. Um, I'm reading a lot of interesting books. Uh, I just started reading this, Struggling to Surrender, by Jeffrey Lang, and I have his two other books, um, you know, um, Even Angels Ask and Losing My Religion, A Call for Help. Uh, he's an American Muslim convert writing about being an American Muslim uh, or American convert to Islam from a Catholic background, so I really, really relate to what he's talking about. And... Um, reading books by Michael Muhammad Knight, and also uh, still keeping in mind the Al-Andalus scholars, the three big ones that I've been talking about, Ibn Hazm, Ibn Arabi, and Ibn Rushd, a.k.a. Averos, and their ways of looking at Islamic theology, um, and, uh, you know, uh, and also looking at Muhammad Assad as well, and his more modern um, look at uh, and revival of some of these points, Islamic points of view that I think have sort of uh, been lost in 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 the more recent discourse uh, with Muslim amongst Muslims themselves. Um, so in other words, what I'm finding by reading these particular authors and by investigating the variations in Islamic history, there is a wide spectrum of how people have approached almost every facet of Islam's history um, and Islam's theology and how one understands. Quranic commands, or uh, interpreting verses, or understanding hadith, and the criticism of the science of the hadith, and the application of hadith, um, how these things all should be understood by Muslims. Um, it's amazing to see how, just like pretty much every organized religion, you have this wide spectrum of interpretation and understandings. So, yes, I've come a long way from where I was. Um, things have definitely changed in my mind as far as how I approach certain topics. Um, so this is why I don't think it's simple just saying adios, you know, to, to the religion of Islam. I feel, I still feel like there is a way for me to be a Muslim and still reconcile with some of these uh, new ideas that I've been having, which in the long run I've discovered there were past Muslims, authors and scholars that were thinking along the same lines that I was thinking. This is why I reference Ibn Rushd and Ibn Arabi and, and, uh, and Ibn Hazm. Uh, and then to find more modern writers like Michael Muhammad Knight and Jeffrey Lang and Muhammad Assad 
uh, talking about these same subjects. I mean, I can't say that I am original. Uh, it's the only difference is that I'm here on YouTube talking about uh, these concepts and these alternatives. I hate using the word alternative. It's these variations, if you will, um, regarding uh, how to under how what it means to be a Muslim and um, and whatnot. So yeah, for those three users who sent me those things, that's all well and good. But yeah, I I, I don't um, think that it's as simple as just saying just let it go because I still I'm still not done with it. <laughs> there are, there are still so much. There's so much to explore. And yeah, I may not fit that mold, that typical Muslim mold that perhaps these three users are used to dealing with. Um, frankly, that might be the case. And so I don't blame them for uh, perhaps looking at me and just going, can't you just let that damn thing go? Uh, but I don't think they really see, uh, and I don't even fully see the exact trajectory I'm going. And I say that clearly in my blog post. I mean, I'm spoilers left and right here, by the way. Um, so yeah, I I don't know. I think that it's it's much more complicated than that. And I think that those three users, um, I don't know if they'll, they'll actually understand that or see that. Anyway, uh, yeah. So another thing um, that I want to point out is I received another PM not too long ago by an individual, who, and I'm not really sure exactly what this person was trying to ask me, but they sent me a number of videos. Um, it's a, it was a mixed bag. Some of it was a, some videos by Captain Disguise, and I believe stopped spamming one, and another one was several links to BibleArchaeology.org, which my understanding is not an academic uh, Christian site. And the whole thing was Egyptology in the Quran, talking about, you know... Maurice Bukhile and his work and Ramses II and the Pharaoh and all these other things, yada, yada, yada. And I think the user, and I was trying to figure out exactly what it was that this user was asking me to do, but I think the user was asking me to refute Stop Spamming One and Captain of Skies or something to that effect um, with regards to uh, the Exodus and the historicity or the Egyptology, uh, I, I'm not really sure uh, exactly what this person was asking me. So I thought instead of, you know, wasting time going into the subject, I, I guess I'll just reiterate what I've said in past videos. I made a video about, what, two years ago now, talking about the comparative religion class that I took uh, that completely rocked my theological foundation. And one of the main concepts of this was the fact that I discovered in my naivety that there was no historical evidence for the Exodus. Um, and from my understanding, there still is not any historical evidence for the Exodus, from my understanding, unless something, unless something has changed in the past two years. Um, when I watched the videos by Stop Spamming One and Captain Disguise, uh, there was really nothing I could disagree with about their videos regarding the Exodus. Um, yeah, their perspectives, their worldviews are different than my own. Um, I'm not an atheist. Um, I do believe in God. Uh, and so our perspectives are different, but when dealing with the same material, I have to come to the same conclusions that they came to, which is there is no historical evidence for the Exodus. And so this is why in my videos, those videos I dealt with on the subject, I then asked myself, I'm not, again, I'm not preaching. I'm not trying to say that you have to agree with me on this, but I ask myself the question, okay, if there's no evidence for this, then to read the text, uh, to read these stories, literally, um, you either have to, if you're going to do that, then you would have to accept the fact there's no historical evidence for it and just take it completely on faith, completely. Or, which is fine, if, if people want to do that, if that's your prerogative, that's fine. I'm not here I'm not here to make this video to tell people that they can't do that. Um, or, if you're going to take a little reading and then you want to believe these things actually happen, because this is why I'm saying certain uh, theological organizations are not grounded in fact. They present themselves as being grounded in fact, but in fact, no pun intended, they are not. In other words, they will try and say that, oh, we have a piece of the rod of Moses, or oh, we've got, you know, the sandal of the Pharaoh, or what have you, right? Or as these two users um, very well, uh, in a very um, strong fashion, showed that the, the statements by Maurice Bacchile, uh were, in fact, didn't hold water. Uh, again, no pun intended, because obviously the Pharaoh drowned... Anyway, I'm sorry. 
bad, bad pun and joke. Anyway, the point is, is that if you're going to take a literal reading of the text, then you have to, you, you run into this problem because there's no evidence, right? Whereas I proposed the option of not taking the text literally. Uh, why is it that we have to believe these events actually happened? Maybe it's the point of the story. Because really, at the end of the day, even if you do believe the events happened, literally, in time and space, or if you say that they did not, and they're just stories that are that are in the, the Bible, in the Quran, or whatever scripture you're reading, and you're both going to come to the same conclusion if you believe that there is a message behind the stories. Right. So, if you feel more comfortable saying, yeah, okay, I'm just going to believe without fact because you think the story has merit, then that's fine. Um, my personal opinion is that you may not have to take the stories literally. Um, they're called stories in the text themselves. At least the Quran refers to it as signs or stories, um, etc. And the only difference is that the pagans, according to the Quran, mocked the stories, right? By just saying, oh, those are just stories. With missing the point of the stories, right? Ignoring the truth or the concepts being taught by the stories. Um, and so that's my answer to this individual. I, I, I can't disagree with the users as presented in their videos because it would be like if I said that there right now there is a, you know, you know, a blue sm you know, smurf behind me right now you know and, and it's like there's no blue smurf behind me uh you can all see that there's no blue smurf if you see a blue smurf behind me there's a problem <laughs> okay um and so that that that's what we're talking about here in, in a really crazy not serious example um some something we have no evidence for an event happening and and a discussion i i you know i can't refute somebody based on that unless of course like i said in the past two years we've found more evidence i don't think we have though um all right so i'm not really sure if there's anything else that really needs to be said um oh yeah one other item uh i believe it stopped spamming made some videos about iera and the idea of evolution and this pamphlet they had written and things like this um yeah i think that there are Unfortunately, this whole issue between religion and evolution, or science, if you will, um, it's unfortunate that we are stuck in this dichotomy of science versus religion. And I'll put in the this more info section documentary called Did Darwin Kill God, or something to that effect, which represents the middle ground. Uh, the countless individuals that believe in God, but also accept scientific fact. This thing would include evolution. Um... There are a number of, uh, well, I'll just cite two. There's uh, Ibn Khaldun, who talked about the, the descent of man from the natural order. And also, uh, I do have a book somewhere around here. I may have to put the title in the more info section as I'm recording this. I don't have it. That talks about the reconciliation between um, Islam, specifically, and, the, and evolution. Um, as the user stated or showed a screenshot of an article that was written saying that more and more muslims are accepting evolution as a fact uh i think that's great because i personally as a muslim do accept evolution so again this idea of maybe not taking the verses quite literally and the documentary this documentary of course is by a christian but it still applies to anybody who's a a believer um it shows that it's not a problem to believe in these subjects so or to accept them as fact so i do uh, applaud the individual for for trying to show that you know for that you really don't need to do this type of you know utter denial or trying to shoot holes into the scientific method or what have you uh just seems utterly ridiculous and i think that this sort of discussion is very important between people uh who are religious and people who are not but we can talk about the subject of science and, 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 and what we accept as fact. Anyway, I know that was a lot of random information, and my views were all over the place. Um, if I haven't been clear about anything after watching this video or reading my blog post, which, I'll, again, I'll 
put the link in the more info section. Please uh, comment or send me a PM or comment on the blog and uh, about anything specific. And um, yeah, always enjoy the continued conversations with individuals. And again, if I've offended anybody who I was not naming directly, um, again, I, I don't I don't mean to cause offense um, or or think that I'm trying to be hostile towards any user uh, on the internet here. Um, but I enjoy these individuals who have sent me these private messages, and uh, please continue to do so. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And the peace and blessings of Almighty God be with you all. Peace.